I want to show you how to use Workplace. The first thing I want to do is bring up Workplace on the screen. And I want to start going over the icons across the top of the page. I am currently logged in to Avaya Workplace from home. Couple reminders, if you're using Avaya from home, you need to make sure that you are connected to the VPN. And then you want to also keep in mind that when you're using Workplace, if you have other family members at home using your internet, depending on what type of Spectrum, AT&T, internet service that you have, it can slow down the Workplace um, application. So just keep that in mind. If you start having issues, you may want to ask people to log off, whatever they're using at home. And then you can always do a reboot on your workstation and then log in again to make sure that the speed of Workplace is working properly. So the first thing I want to do is go over the icons across the top of the screen. Here on the left hand corner where you see a little person, when you click on that, it will bring up your telephone number. A lot of you guys have used extensions and, and not have a DID or telephone number. So if at any point you forget your telephone number, you can click on the little person and your telephone number will be listed here. Below that, it will show presence. You will get a document um, on the link that was sent to you in an email that will give you what presence mean. You can go in here and say that you're busy or away or do not disturb. And then when you are logged off of this application, it will say you're offline. This is something or a way for other employees to see if you are available or not. Um, if you are transferring calls and you're an answer point person, it is really nice because you can see who's available or not. Below that is incoming call features. You can do call forwarding or send all calls. Call forwarding, you can click on it and you can put in a telephone number with the area code and telephone number and forward your calls to another location. If you are an answer point and you're listening to this training, please do not ever use call forwarding because it will break the call flow of the call when you get an incoming call to the office. If you are not an answer point person, you can call forward your phone to your cell phone, to a coworker, or anyone else that you need to forward your calls to. Send all calls, sends all calls straight to voicemail. You want to make sure that you come back in and um, select it to turn it off. But if you're having a meeting and you do not want the workstation to ring through the speakers, you can come in here and do send all calls and that sends all calls straight to voicemail. Going across the top of the screen here, you have what's the home icon. You have favorites, which is a smaller list of your contacts of for you to go into and call someone very quickly. You have the list of your contact list. You have the history and then you have the calendar. So let's start going over each icon. The home calendar I typically like to keep mine here because it has the dial pad and it has the search feature where you can go in and search for someone's name or number. If you want to call someone you can click on the dial pad you do not have to dial a 9 or a 0, but you have to dial the area code and telephone number of the person that you wish to call. Once you dial the number, you will hit call, and that will activate the um, workplace to call someone. If you would like to search for someone, you can do the first or last name, and I have Rick Johnson in my contacts. So I could quickly highlight his name and go over here and hit call. So you can search on your contacts very quickly and call someone that's in your contacts. I'm going to remove Rick from the contacts. I'm going to go back home. Here where it says next meeting, this is where your meetings from your calendar will show up. This is connected to your Outlook 
So whatever meetings that you have on your calendar in Outlook, it will show up here um, in the next meeting area. History, the quick view of missed calls, outgoing calls, incoming calls. So if you're away from your deck, uh, desk taking a restroom break or taking a lunch break, when you come back, you can see missed calls. It'll give you the date and the time. You can go over here and hover over top of the phone and it will allow you to call that person back. When you go to your favorites, this is a list, a smaller list that I have created of project managers in my office that I quickly need to call. If you work for CHFS, it may be the um, abuse hotline. It could be um, someone outside of your agency. It could be the uh, police department. So it could be a variety of people, but they have to start in your contacts first. So once you have your list of contacts and notice here on every tab, there is a keypad and a search menu for you to search to call someone on every icon. So here right now it shows that Chad is not available. Let's say Chad um, starts to work for another agency and we're going to remove him from our favorites. All I'm going to do is remove from favorites and that will remove him from my favorites. If I want to call someone from my list, I highlight the person, go over and um, highlight the little receiver and I hit call and that will call them very quickly. On your contacts, if you are wanting to add someone into your favorites, you would search for a name and there is Chad. I'm gonna highlight his name. I'm gonna go over and hit the star and when I add the star to his name, I can go back to favorites and you will see that Chad's back to my list. So adding and removing is basically just clicking on the star to remove and when you're in your contacts to add them. This is your contact list. Again, notice there is a dial pad and a place to search for a number to call someone. This is a list of everyone in my contacts. You can see who's available and who's not just by scrolling through and seeing um, your list and who's available and who's not. At this point is typically um, when we ask everybody to go up here to options and settings, which is the little gauge up here in the right hand corner. You're gonna click on that. Then we're gonna go to contacts. It's on the right hand side. When you click on that, we want to make sure show local contacts is turned off. That way you start with a fresh contact list and it's not pulling from Outlook. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go in here and turn show local contacts off. Press OK and it's going to tell you that it's going to log you out and back in. It does it very quickly and then I'm going to press done. You will then have a shorter list and if you ever want to add to your list of contacts, there is a little plus sign over here to the right hand side, create contacts. When you click on the plus sign, it's going to bring up another screen. If I want to add someone to this list, you would simply put their first and last name has to have a telephone number before it will actually save it. If you want to add them to your favorites, you click the little star and then you hit add to contacts. Okay. And that will add it to the list of your contacts. If this is someone outside of the agency, say you want to put a courthouse or a judge in here, you could go in and add that information. Notice that you can come down here and put more than one phone number in. You can do a mobile, you can do a fax, a pager. Again, once you have that information in, you're going to click on add to contacts and save. I'm going to go out. And so that's how you add people into your contacts very quickly. The next icon is open history list. Notice again, you have the dial pad and the search bar here to where you can search to call someone. This is a list of callers that have called me or I have called them or I've missed a call. Notice it has the date and the time. And if I would like to call them back, I just hit call. If you want to view, let's say, just 
the miss calls. You'll go up here to the history at the top of your page. There's an arrow. Go down to miss calls. It's going to give you a list of callers that you've missed. If you want to um, see incoming calls, you switch it to incoming calls and it'll just show those. If you would like to show all history, I typically leave it on that and I have all history. At some point, you may want to delete your history. So at this point, if I click delete all history, it's going to go in and click delete everybody. If I want to delete them individually, you can right click on the number and go to remove from call history and it will remove individual phone calls that have come in. The next icon, it is your um, calendar. Here's where your calendar will show. I do not have mine logged in, but you will have your calendar that will show up here. Again, it has the dial pad and the search menu so you can search to look up a telephone number for someone that you would like to call. The reason why this is blank is if you get an error message, it says view active alert. If you click on this, it's going to say for you to go to Enterprise Directory Sign In. It's going to take you right to the spot where you need to go in and update your password. This password will be the password that you log into your desktop in the mornings. This will be the only password that will expire with Workplace. Everything else stays the same, but you will have to go in and update your password when it expires in Outlook. Once you have updated that, you're going to press Done, and it's going to update the information, and this error message will go away. The icon next to it is your messages. If you have a message, it will tell you how many messages that you have. When you click on this, it's going to go in and take you in and ask you to put in your password. Once you have set up your voicemail, you will only have to put in your password when you click on this. We have added instructions onto the website to set up voicemail. So one of the first things you may want to do is go in and set up your voicemail so that when you log into Workplace, you'll be able to see when you have a message, it will alert you and tell you how many messages that you have. We have put those steps out on the website. And um, if you have any question, you can call the Commonwealth Service Desk and they can direct you to that website. If there's any changes that you would like to make to the application, if you remember, we went into Options and Settings. You can go in here and make um, changes. For the most part, you want to keep everything the same. The only reason you would come in here is to go in and update your information under accounts. And here's where, again, your telephone number will be and then your email address and your password. To minimize the window, you would click on minimize. And to exit out, to close out the window, you would go here. Now, let's say at the end of the day you're working from home and you do not want your phone to ring. If you close out the window, the phone will still ring. You will actually have to go over here to the little person and you'll have to go down to sign out. Once you sign out, you will have a window that looks like this. In the morning when you come into the computer, all you have to do is hit sign in. and it will bring your application back up. So now what I want to show you is what happens when you get a call that comes through the workplace. 